We're going to talk about engaging the audience and social media, and specifically about writing for social media. So um, we've got an assignment in class. Um, I often refer to it as live tweeting. It really can be just live coverage using any social media. So any social media that we might use for this assignment is acceptable. We'll also use a new tool called Wakelet. This assignment requires many things, um, even though we may be accustomed to posting on social media and think we do it relatively effortlessly, when we're doing it professionally, it carries um, an extra significance. So in this assignment, um, you will have to use your media writing skills on deadline. You will post um, during the event, right? So as it's happening. You'll have to exercise news judgment. You'll have to multitask, um, taking photos and video and posting those. It'll be about storytelling, um, having an interesting story as you move through. Um, and about, it really is all about your advanced research and preparation so that you can do all of these other things well. Um, and we'll be learning a new tool, Wakelet. So what do you need to do to be prepared? There's a long list, and, and um, you may come up, of course, with many more items than this. But um, you've got to know the appropriate hashtags for whatever you're doing. And in our case, we certainly are going to use the class hashtag, MC1313, but there will be other ones potentially as well. Correct spelling on name, so the whole name, but also um, the Twitter handle of anybody who might, you might mention. Um, if there's associated websites, um, it's good to have that information. You may want to... Um, put that out as extra content, and really um, any sort of extra content that you think may come in handy that you can share with your audience. It's a way of giving them a little something extra, um, even to the people who might be in the room. Um, background to ask questions. There isn't always an opportunity to ask questions, but just having that background can help you understand the context of what's going on. I like to keep notes in my phone whenever um, I think that I'm going to potentially live tweet. So I'm a Joe Ely fan. Um, he's a sort of rockabilly Texas country musician and he plays all over the world but he plays uh, because he's from Austin he plays in San Marcos in the park free um, each summer and so I he doesn't actually have a Twitter handle but um, I keep the Twitter handles of the organization that sponsors the concert some um, appropriate hashtags for um, his type of music a list of songs that I know he will sing um, and I want the actual correct title I want the correct title to the song um, and, you know, the name of his band, that sort of thing. So um, aside from that, I also often do some sort of pre-writing of tweets so that I can use these, um, pop these in um, now and again as I'm going. Um, using social media effectively um, is really the tenet of each of our professions. So across our professions, whether we're talking about strategic communication or journalism, um, we all do these things. So we use it for branding, both our own personal brand um, and also for our product or service that we're doing. Um, for connecting with customers and audiences, um, both hearing them, responding to complaints, but also um, praise. And for reporting news, and we might think this is just for the journalists, you know, spot news and live reporting, but it's um, quite common for PR professionals to go to an event that their organization actually uh, put together and then for you to cover that event live. Um, we offer extra material, so sometimes it's that little added bonus of something that um, somebody who might be watching our story on, on TV, um, on the news, wouldn't get. It's a little behind the scenes. We share some personal material, and, and you know, there's no magic number to this, but as you do your social media account in general, you might have about a third personal content and then the rest professional, um, and that's branding yourself as a professional. Um, as you're covering an event, you won't put that much personal in there, but you might put um, a little bit. We also use social media to locate new sources um, for information and also to follow sources to keep up with what's going on. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the limitations or the rules for each platform. Twitter, 280 character limit. Facebook, lots more. Instagram, cut you off after a few lines. Snapchat, pretty short. YouTube, 15 minutes of video upload unless you have a verified account. Um, but there really are, you know, aside from these parameters, there really are ways to do this effectively that's going to be much, much more engaging for your audience. So we know that images tend to double the views on a specific post. So using images is critical. Shorter text is better. You may be able to have a lot of text on Facebook, but people don't go to Facebook to read books. So shorter is better. Even in um, tweeting, you can have 280 characters, but you may get better traction with many fewer. 
Um, tweets with just one or two hashtags often are more effective. Instagram, it's okay to use more. Cross-promote among your platforms, right? So this is really um, important and effective as professional communicators. Twitter is more for um, sort of constant updates, short text, photos, video, and the hashtag is really king in Twitter. Um, links and shared content, all that we push out with Twitter. Facebook, we have fewer updates, so you're not likely to update Facebook 10 times um, within an hour or two. That's not effective, but we do like Facebook Live, right? That's a good way to share um, something going on. We also like photos and video there. It is a little bit longer text that works, and links and content shared there as well. Instagram, um, definitely a different animal, right? So much, many fewer updates. Um, primarily, this is a visual platform, as I'm sure you know. So it's more about the beautiful image or the video and short captions. But we do like context, so don't just throw a photo out there and give us no idea, right? For, for this type of communication, you can do that personally, but for this type of communication, context is important. Um, the tactical use of social media, and it really is tactical. So let's look at a bit of a case study here. Gabe Gutierrez is an NBC reporter, and he was um, in El Paso working on immigration stories. So he had a Facebook Live, about an eight minute Facebook Live, shot by professional photographers, professional videographers, and a sound guy in the car with him. So he has this on Facebook, it tips to the nightly news, which he'll be on the nightly news. Um, and then he's also got a tweet about it as well, right? So he's also out with his crew and he shares a little bit about it on Twitter. Then on Twitter also, he's telling one of the stories. So he actually, um, he tweeted out six tweets for this piece of the story, which is about some children being reunited with their um, migrant fathers. And so in this case, he's got things like, hello, daddy, the migrant fathers describe emotional reunions after family separations. So he has a whole story that's appearing on NBC News um, on the website, but then he also tweets out pieces of it um, in Twitter and sometimes indicates breaking news when it was just starting out. So this was the beginning all the way down to after the story was already filed and on NBC News he tweeted out some more. He also shared this across Instagram and Facebook, right? So this one story he also posted on Instagram, part of the same story, linked to the same um, story online, um, and then pushed that to Twitter. So he's working across these platforms um, to try to reach that audience. Same thing happens in PR. The Obama visit to South by Southwest a little bit ago, um, the Austin airport team used Twitter to talk about, you know, POTUS visiting Austin and then was on Facebook giving um, them more information so that they did a, quite a bit on Twitter, including a video. And then on Facebook, um, it was um, sort of more detailed information about what you need to know if you're going to come to the airport during this time. One note, do know your audience. Um, in case you missed it, might work fine. Um, but consider who the audience is as you're using your social media. Um, Wakelet is the tool we will use. It's a helpful tool. There, we used to use a tool called Storify, but that went um, purely for a fee, so we're not using that anymore. But um, these sorts of tools allow you to aggregate social media, right? So they allow you to pull in a number of different social media platforms and pick out the posts and add them to your Wakelet. You can also use it as a bookmarking site. This can be very helpful and a good um, tool to know how to use as you're trying to get internships. Um, Banjo is a social media sort of police scanner, right? It's a way to scan for social media happening in your area. Um, we do have an account um, with Banjo, the university. They offer a free access for um, university students in specific classes, so you may have access to this once you move um, farther along in the mass comm um, course program. I mean, this is interesting, right? So you can see specifically this, these are posts that are in San Marcos. You can see it all the way down to the actual building of where somebody's posting. Only for public accounts, of course, but, you know, it's social. It's public. Uh, branding is definitely uh, one of the big things we do in social media. And so I just, I, I just love this tweet. This was the CIA's first tweet. They didn't join Twitter until 2014, but it's gotten you know, hundreds of thousands of retweets and likes. So their first tweet, we can neither confirm nor deny that this is our first tweet. That was just brilliant. They, every anniversary, they tweet out something else. So this was after their first Twitter anniversary. No, no, we don't know where Tupac is. Yeah, they're kind of funny. Um, this tweet from Oreos um, really is, is um, a great case history. And it was known as the tweet heard around the world because when the Super Bowl blackout happened a little bit ago, um, 
Oreo tweeted out this, power out, no problem, in this image, you can still dunk in the dark. And that was just seen as brilliance, right? So a Super Bowl ad cost $4 million for 30 seconds. This tweet cost them zero media dollars, right? They didn't have to spend any money on media buys for this tweet. It was just part of their campaign. And it got huge response, huge response. If you want to find the backstory to this, um, there's a really good story on Digiday. 15 people um, worked on this, basically. There was a whole, you know, they weren't planning on this, but they were planning for all contingencies, and this is what came out of the team. So it was brilliant. Twitter can also, as all social media really can be dangerous, you are publishing to the world, and you are in the profession of mass comm. And so you have an obligation um, to your brand and to your boss um, to do it resp responsibly. So this is a PR professional who you may have heard of. She tweeted while she got on a plane. She tweeted, going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. Yeah, extremely um, irresponsible. So she tweeted that, very bad idea. And, when she did, and, she, and then she turned her phone off on the plane. She didn't know until she got off the plane when everything was blowing up on her phone what had happened. Um, so legally, you are responsible for everything you post. You are responsible for what you post. Now, this is not illegal. It was stupid and reprehensible, but it, it's not illegal. However, ethics come into play as well, right? So you can be held accountable for your actions because your boss can fire you, and there's nothing that says your boss can't fire you for something like this. So things that are in poor taste, that have poor grammar, um, copyright issues, right? Like you've got, you should own the copyright to what you're posting. We should also be aware of accuracy, things like typos. Um, those things really can affect us. So it, it's we have fewer words, which means there's more attention on every single word. So yeah, this is a uh, Washington Post DC um, reporter. So this was his tweet. Also, couldn't couldn't argument be made for 24-hour shifts would be cheaper for the city? Like I'm sure he meant shifts in that case. And then here's ABC News. As well, breaking news, police say Kensington shooting suspect, suspect, double words, too, too many words there, Philip Gilberti shit and killed himself. Again, just proofread. Before you hit send, proofread. And we've all made stupid mistakes, left out a word or something. These are the worst kind of mistakes. When you're going to quote somebody on Twitter, there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, this is one way to use quote marks, quote marks, and then just a hash or something um, Here's the person who said it, Evan Smith, with appropriate hashtags. This is from Colton Parker, by the way, a Texas State uh, journalism alum who is the digital editor at the Texas Observer. Um, here's another way you could do it. You could do at Evan Smith and, and note like Evan A. Smith because Evan Smith, who's editor or publisher of the Texas Tribune, has the middle initial. And then the quote. Everything you do on Twitter doesn't have to be all the things for the live coverage. They do not have to be quotes, but you do, should have some quotes in it. Um, creative is good, right? So appropriately creative. A Venice beach bum found a Venice beach bomb in the sand, apparently. Still unfolding cops and choppers galore. And there's a link. That works so long as it doesn't blow up and kill somebody. right? Um, and here's a tip. The at is silent. Did you know that? The at is silent when you're using it with a mention. Um, it's snowing at Texas State. Not it's snowing Texas State. Unless what you meant was, hey, it's snowing, you people at Texas State. So it's a little thing, but, you know, just shows you know what you're doing. Um, it's also good to share posts on social media to give that sort of inside feel, right? So here's um, covering a big funeral, lots of shoving as people try to touch the casket of Pope Shenandoah. Or in this case, it's a little behind the scenes look and a little personal, right? So just visited Emerson Alternative High School in Oklahoma City. 70% of the girls are or have been pregnant, but they're still in school impressed. So this is the story she's working on and just gives you a little tip about what it's going to be. Snapchat also can be really useful. Snapchat stories in particular can be a good way to share content. Um, a lot of media outlets and PR pros are using Snapchat for that purpose. It's harder for us to use it for this class just because of the way you have to collect it um, to turn it in. But it is something to consider as you're going about your professional business. So many places to share. Um, it's about thinking strategically about the best platform for you and the best way to use those few words that you're going to use in social media.